The views expressed by our guests in the following video are solely the opinions of our guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and or opinions of the Ola 7 podcast show. Viewer discretion is advised. to the genius kids the show where we get to spotlight the extraordinary young talents who are shaping the future and we're also doing amazing amazing things today today we are thrilled to introduce to you a remarkable 12 year old girl whose passion for robotics shines brightly alongside their impressive skills in building and programming robots she enjoys reading swimming and diving deep into the pool of, of the world of technology get ready to be inspired as we explore her incredible journey and learn about the innovative projects that she's been working on this is like guys this is somebody who is really 12 and she's been working on innovative projects so please stay tuned welcome kayla Hi, how are you guys? I'm you? good. I'm good. How are you feeling about this? I'm really nervous. Like it's a bit nerve wracking. Uh -huh. So I just don't know. I'm just in between nervous and excited. But you'll be fine. I know you're excited. So if you're excited, the excitement can then cover the, the nervousness. Yeah. So um, I would like to I would like you to tell me about yourself. Like who is Kayla? How many are you is it Kayla or Kayla? It's Kayla. Kayla. Who is Kayla? How many are you in your family? And what position are you in your family? Something like that. Well, Kayla, I'd say she's um well a bit introverted. Mm -hmm. But when it's people she's like really close to, she can be really extroverted. And then she's just there, curiosity. You know, curiosity killed a cat, Exactly. Right? And then I'm really curious to know about things. So, well, practically I found out most things I'm not supposed to know. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's been really tough. And, well, in my family, we're mm -hmm. five and I'm the firstborn. Debut parent? Yeah, debut parent. I'm also parent. the firstborn in my family. So, how is it like being a debut parent? Well, practically it's a bit different because... You know, when they're just like, no, you should give it to your younger sibling because they're younger than you. And then you're like, but I also need it. And exactly. they don't need it. How, how, the, how about the pressure of having your siblings looking up to you? Like in everything that you do, you know, there are people looking up to me. There are people are following in whatever that I'm doing. Well, I don't really care much about that. <laughs> but you need to. <laughs> I never think about that, actually. Mm -hmm. I'm just there and I'm like, I'm living my life. And it's for me. I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to live my life. I think I think I love. I, I, I need to have that attitude as well. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> Where do you learn? I learn at Abby's Preparatory School. Abby's Preparatory School. Yeah. Which grade? I'm in grade. I'm a seventh grader. Hey, are you ready for exams, my guy? I think I'm ready. Well, if they say the exam is cancelled and we're writing it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we're writing it today. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll just go home. I'll take my study stuff, materials. Then I'll come back and write the exam. Then. Okay, interesting. So you're ready. Yeah. Do you have any friends? And what do you guys do during your spare time? Well, practically, these days, we don't spend much time together. Mm -hmm. But usually, um, when it's meeting each other, we might meet each other at cafes and stuff like that. Just for studying and then we might get some coffee or some juice or snacks and then we actually get to study there. Okay. So I do have friends like from your seventh grade or you have also have other friends who are younger than you or friends who are older than you? I have some friends who are older than me, mm -hmm. but as seventh graders we play together because we understand each other more and we feel more comfortable around each other. I understand. So one of your hobbies is swimming. Yeah. Right? What do you enjoy the most about swimming? I Well, what I enjoy about swimming is that I actually get to get refreshed and just diving into the water. You get really mm -hmm. refreshed and it's really cool inside there. And then you get to learn new skills you didn't know about. Yeah, it's really exciting. But swimming, yeah, swimming is really like one of the sports that make you use the, your whole body. 
Like, you know, you're using your hands, you're using your legs. Like, you can actually tell that your muscles are at work. Like, after swimming, you know how, like, you feel really tired, you feel really drained, and you still enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy it, because mm-hmm. I'm actually used to it. You know, um, first days, it was really hard, because, mm-hmm. like, you know, after swimming, we'd maybe do, like, four or five laps of 40 meter or 25 meter races and then you just come back home your legs are aching exactly and then well actually i got used to it Mm -hmm. and with time i actually don't feel pain anymore after swimming so actually we've had like two rounds from the pool and back and then you tumble turn you go back so yeah i'm actually so do you have a favorite stroke or style in swimming yeah my favorite stroke is freestyle because mm-hmm. it's really easy. You don't have to put in much exactly. work and energy. So that's my favorite. So have you ever participated in a swim competition before? Or yeah. Is just a school? I have, mm-hmm. but once. Because, um, well, our school doesn't really organize competitions like that. So usually I do it as a hobby just to enjoy myself. And yeah. Are you part of any club? Any yeah. swim club? club? Is it warm or at school? I actually go for a swimming academy. It's Splash Splash Academy. Mm-hmm. But I actually get to meet other swimmers and my coaches. We actually have a lot of fun there. So are there any swimmers that you can say, this is, this is the person that I look up to when it comes to swimming, you know? No, not really. Why? Why not? <laughs> I just, like, motivate myself. I just want to be better in swimming. And you're just there. And I'm like, oh, so... I need to get there to this point where I can actually swim like about five seconds. And yeah, breaking world records. That's just my motivation. No, but there are people who have been breaking the, the records. Like there are people who set the records that are there right now. So you don't even look up to them. You know what? No. I want to, <laughs> my guy, you're a debut parent for you. <laughs> like, you know, you're setting your own pace. You're like, I don't care what you guys did, but I'm going to set my own pace. I'm going to do things. The way I like, I'm, I'm going to break the records that you guys set. Yeah, okay. I'm just there and I'm like, okay. So today, my main goal is I want to swim for 28 seconds mm-hmm. or I want to finish this lap in 40 seconds. That's just my main goal, which keeps me motivated to keep on swimming. And this keeps you also motivated for to go for your practices? How often do you practice? Usually, it's every Saturday. Mm-hmm. So At the academy? Yeah. So I go there every Saturday, then we practice, we also play some fun games, and we really enjoy our time there. It has to be fun and exciting, because you have to actually get like really used to socializing with people. Mm-hmm. So usually when I go for swimming at my swimming academy, so we actually get to socialize with other people, and then you get to actually play together, teach each other teach each other some new skills. For example, like um, right now, one of my new skills I've just learned I can make a hand. I can do a handstand in water, and it has been a skill I have been learning for years, and it has been really hard. So nice. yeah, well done. So from the practices and all the swimming meets that you have done, do you have any memorable story that you can say? You know what? I'll never forget this day. This was really funny, or something that you really loved. Well, there's this at the time, like we're swimming, right? Mm-hmm. So we have to do warm up before we start swimming. Mm-hmm. And then my brother's there. He's actually doing like wrong things because he thinks that <laughs> the coach is not noticing. Mm-hmm. And then he's just there. Others are just actually kicking and warming up. And then he's just there and he's standing. And then when the coach looks at him, and then he actually starts pretending to do it. And then the coach, she was like, oh, I noticed it, Daniel. And then he's like, Daniel, is it so tea? And then I'm just there and we all start laughing. <laughs> You're like, my guy, what's up? <laughs> but that's really funny though. So how do you get to balance swimming and other activities that you enjoy? Well, I set a schedule so that like, I can actually balance my stuff. Well, practically, you guys, you guys are setting schedules. Do you know I had this other kid from? I, I'm not. For, I'm forgetting the institution. He was like, I have a schedule for everything that I do, and it's like 11. I'm like, my guy. He's like, I have a schedule for everything. You know, I'm always ready for anything because it's planned. Yeah, you have to plan your things because really, I suffer from procrastination. So a schedule is the really one thing that keeps me going because you have a certain time to do that thing and if you don't do it at that time you're not going to have time to do it so a schedule is actually 
one thing that keeps me motivated to keep on going. Mm-hmm. For example, if I say that I have to do swimming from 1 to 2 p.m., then I'm doing swimming from 1 to 2 p.m. Because after 2 p.m., I have to do something different. For example, I need to study for some test we're going to write for the coming week. And yeah, it's just like that. So the, t- the, the tip is having a schedule. Yeah, having a schedule okay. and a routine. Okay, so there's, 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 a, there's a question here uh, from the comment section. It's saying, what's the coolest swimming trick or skill that you have learned? Well, it's been a really struggle, but I finally know how to tumble turn. And also, as I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. I can also do a handstand in water. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, it's just because it was really hard. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you're trying to tumble turn, you have to exactly. push into the water and then you slide in through the walls. Mm-hmm. So... When I used to try to do that, like, you know, you just start floating up from the water and then you're trying to go deep, like diving mm-hmm. in, and then you turn back and then you just start floating out of nowhere. Like the water is just trying to push you back up. And then, yeah, it was and a really struggle. Trying. Yeah, I kept on trying. So after a lot of tries and turns and struggles, mm-hmm. I finally got the thing. I now know how to turn but turn. Well done. Do you have any tips for somebody who wants to be in swimming just like you? Okay, if you want to swim, you don't have to be scared of water. Because the moment That's you're the scared thing. of water, because I still remember this other time, um, we were taught to dive into the water and we were at the shallow end. And then actually you can stand at the shallow end. Mm-hmm. And then my friend, she's there and then she's she's closing her eyes when she's diving in. And then she actually starts like slapping the water and she's she was really scared of water. Then from that time, ever since, she never wanted to swim ever again because of that experience. I was also scared of water at some point. So I remember um, a friend of mine, would, after, after our swimming lessons, so I was going at the Kirstie Coventry Swimming Academy. So when we're done with our lessons, you know, sometimes you just have to chill, you know, relax yeah. uh, before you go home. Then I was standing like at the deep end, but I wasn't in the swimming pool. Then he was like, can you dive? I'm like, no, I don't want, you know, like I was scared. Then he just pushed me from that day. I know how to dive. (laughs) I was really scared and he pushed me. He's like, my guy, I just found myself in water, like deep, deep. I'm like, I just have to save my life here. And from that time, even up to now, I really love diving. That's nice Mm because I've seen this other video of this other kid who was just like, thrown into water Mm -hmm. and then they don't know how to swim and then it's a live or die situation and then he actually just starts swimming out of nowhere and then (laughs) he can't swim but he starts swimming because he He wants to to live live. he wants to live because i've heard of this at the time Mm -hmm. like um some people like they want to commit suicide right Mm -hmm. and then they're like um if you really really want to commit suicide you can throw yourself into into the ocean you actually find yourself struggling and trying to live because you know someone's drowning and then they're like actually struggling and pushing against the waves so they say you just throw yourself in the into the ocean and then you actually see yourself struggling to Mm -hmm. live so yeah you don't want to kill yourself but you want to kill what's inside you i understand and i think that's a good trick if somebody says i want to kill myself you just tell them to throw themselves (laughs) in the ocean and they'll fight for their lives so um, your other hobby is reading books. Yes. What kind of books do you read? I prefer reading fiction books because I want to get that excitement. And, <clears throat> you know, when you're just reading a fiction book and then they're there, like, you, have to, you can actually imagine being mm-hmm. there um, compared to nonfiction. Because nonfiction, you're actually reading things that are real mm-hmm. and it's a bit boring because you, ju- you just want that energy in you, that boosted energy inside yourself so um i prefer reading fiction books you just got me boring right now because i don't like fiction <laughs> Why i read not? fiction because i want to read about real things like there's a day there's a weekend when i was reading about this book so this book was like 400 pages right yeah then i read the book do you know it was just talking about this other weekend like four days literally a whole 400 page book like i was talking about your weekend you know this all fiction you can tell that this never happened and imagine reading the book in like a week then you're reading something that never happened <laughs> well um for me it's actually that what keeps me motivated so because mm-hmm. sometimes you know um i can actually read a book about for two days 
a 400 page book for two days and i'm just there i want to know what's gonna happen next even though it's not real but you just want to know what's gonna happen next because it's really exciting because you can't just leave the book there it's gonna leave you with suspension like you want to know what's gonna happen like after when for example like they just leave you there and then they're like for you to know what's gonna happen next you have to get the next book and buy a new book which is just boring like so sometimes when i actually finish a book i might actually feel like restarting the book because it was really exciting and it put that vibe in me and it's just like for some of us readers it's the worst feeling to ever finish a book that you were reading especially like when that book was really really good like yeah who is your favorite author my favorite author mm-hmm. i'd say it's francis hogson burnett and Whitney Hansen. Why? Um, Whitney Hansen, I just love mm-hmm. her for her poetry. She gives that, <clears throat> like, she's really emotional when she's writing her poetry. You can actually feel her, like, wow, this is you. This is actually, she's, like, writing about you. That's what I also like about Burnett. When she's writing her books, you feel like the that one script or page was actually written for you. Like, um... I like, just, you feel yourself in it. Like, you're not, you know, this person was writing for me. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you feel like you feel involved. I understand. It's almost like they're writing a whole thing about you. And then you're just there and I'm like, wow. It feels, this really feels like me and I can feel it. So, yeah, most books have actually changed my perspective of things. So, so do you have an, any book that you have read more than once? Yeah. And why? <laughs> It's The Little Princess by Burnett. Because mm-hmm. um, I've read it more than once. I just like her. You know, the first time I actually read that book, mm-hmm. I actually cried. Because I can feel the emotion. Like, there's this other girl, her name's Sarah. She loses her everything. Her parents, her father. And then she's just dumped at some boarding school there. And then, like, when the parents died, when they actually found out that no one's going to take care of her, mm-hmm. they just took everything. The money her father left for her, like, everything. And then I just feel like reading the book over and over again. Because, well, most of the books, it's either they're going to have a sad or happy ending. And I just like some of the language they're using. For example, they're going to use, like, some personification Mm -hmm. and some figurative language that actually keeps you like hyped up to read the book so amongst all the books that you have read do you have any book that you can say this changed my way of thinking or it made like it changed your perspective or made you think differently yeah it's the invention of hugo cabre by bar brian Sosnick. what is it about like, it's about this other guy who tries to invent a train so that they can, like, find out what their father actually left for him before he died. Because before he died, he said some words that involved a train, but he never finished those words, and then he died. So it just keeps me, like, you know when you want to read more and mm-hmm. actually want to find out what the father said? And, well, the words that the father said were just, um, like keep on going never give up and don't try to impress other people and yeah because um sometimes i actually found out that myself that like when i'm there at school well socializing had been a problem for me Mm -hmm. because i suffered from social anxiety the earlier days so for me to fit in and find out actually find friends i had to like change my attitude you know um because, you know, when you have friends who are not interested in novels, and then you actually want to tell them, they're going to be like, oh, no, you're a nerd. It's so boring. Why are you always talking about books? So I actually pretended to like what I didn't like. Mm-hmm. And, well, it really changed my perspective. Because these days, I don't want to impress anyone. It's not about them. It's about me. So I don't want to impress anyone these days. So, yeah, it's really changed my perspective. Last week, I had Amy in the studio. Yeah. Are you guys friends? Because you also talked about how she loves reading books and fiction and whatnot, whatnot. Yeah, we're really close friends. You know, um, she's actually like the first friend I actually heard had when I actually first went to Abby's when I was a fourth grader. So do you guys discuss books together? 
Well, sometimes we do. Mm. We actually give each other like ideas of books to read, and then she actually gives me a book. For example, she's the one who introduced me to The Little Princess, mm. and then I actually got interested in it. So we just introduced each other to some books, and it's really great. Oh, I like that. If you could be a character in any book, who would you choose and why? Well, it's a really tough choice, but maybe Sarah from The Little Princess cuz Sarah she was a really motivate she really motivated people mm. and she was a motivational person even though she lost everything she kept herself motivated mm. and all and was always kind to the girls that were at her boarding school and they were actually kind to her and were the ones who helped her when she lost everything so it just inspires me to like Um no matter what situation you're in you should always learn to help people and be kind. No, do you love helping people? Sometimes. Not <laughs> Why sometimes. Cuz sometimes I've actually noticed that if you keep on helping people they're actually going to try to use you cuz they're like, "Oh, okay. This person is actually like easy to use." But sometimes like sometimes people need genuine help like, you know, they're not trying to use you or something. They just need help. Well, it's oh, really you know hard now? to mm-hmm. differentiate mm-hmm. between the people who actually want help and the people who want to use you. So, it's it's been a tough time. I understand. So, do you have any books that you're excited to read next? Um, I've heard about a lot of reviews from Google. Uh, like this book is called The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. I'm read I really want to read it because mm-hmm. I've heard a lot of reviews from people. They say it's a good book and I actually want to read it. So, yeah. So when do you plan when do you plan to start? As soon as my parents get me that book. <laughs> <laughs> so your parents know that you need that book and they're going to read it. Yeah. So how do you like do you you talked about how you f- you found the reviews on on Google? Is that the way that you use to find new books to read? Do you also do you always go on Google and look at the books that have the most reviews? Yeah, that's what I usually mm-hmm. do. Or I go to I think it's the book World well, Book of Worlds and wait, I'm forgetting the name, but it's in Highland Park. Then I go to the librarian there. Mm-hmm. Um she actually tells me like which books people actually liked most and then I try reading those books. But well, as soon as I look at the cover, I judge a book by its cover. So I'm just going to look at the book and then like this book looks boring. But they say don't judge a book by its cover. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's different for me cuz mm-hmm. I can see whether a book is exciting or not exciting depending on how they wrote the words, the text on the cover page or what color the cover page is. So it's the actually one thing that keeps me motivated to read. Mm-hmm. Now let's go to robotics. Ah, there's something that's interesting here. Like like I said last last week I had Emmy from your institution as well and she's into robotics. And today I have you. You're also into robotics. What's with robotics in in your school? Is it you guys as friends or the institution encourages you guys to do robotics? Well, our institution is the one which encourages us to do robotics. Cuz if it's me mm-hmm. and Amy, we actually struggled to get a real club that we actually interested in. If you ask her, we moved a lot of clubs from school. And then actually we go to robotics and then we're there. This is our calling. We should keep her here. And then since the 4th grade, we've mm-hmm. been in robotics and well, life has been pretty much enjoyable in robotics. Cuz like I think we've moved about 5 clubs, not finding which one to pursue. And and then robotics is there. They welcomed us, our teachers there. And yeah, it was a really great experience in robotics. I love that. So I'm not into robotics. I'm not into any sciences, and I would like to understand what coding is in robotics. You know, I'd probably be like, "Hey, coding, hey, you know what? Hey, yeah, this coding, what not, what not? What is it in robotics?" Well, coding is like when you write in computer programs. Mm-hmm. Like um for example, if you want a computer to do something or Let's say you have a child. For them to understand something, you have to explain it first to them and then you tell them to do the thing. So that's the same with coding. Coding is just like when you tell computers to do something, but you text it in and then you write it as, as code. And 
instead of telling it manually because computers don't understand the language that we speak. For example, if you want to tell a child that, um, the, like, for example, go and wash the dishes, it's just straightforward. Go and wash the dishes. But for a computer, then you have to go digital, right? For example, if you're using Arduino Uno, just digital, right? Go wash the dishes. And then, um, for example, there's some codes that computers understand. Computers, they actually speak their own language, which is zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not like us humans can actually understand zeros and ones. So code is just there to help you. For example, programming languages. So you're going to type in the code. And then the code, like, what is it called? The, like, programmer thing is actually going to process it and turn into zeros and ones so that the computer can understand the language. So everyone in, everyone in robotics does coding? Yeah, everyone in robotics does coding. Oh, so that is what inspired you guys to join robotics. That's yeah. More coding, coding, computer language and whatnot, whatnot, ones and zeros that we all don't understand. So in, in robotics and in your coding, what's the most challenging part of your project that you have done? Because I understand you guys also had a project that went for the science buskers, is it? Yeah, so we've had a lot of struggles with mm -hmm. almost all the projects we've done. For example, like when you type in the code and then there's an error showcasing on it and then you actually kind of found out mm -hmm. like what's this error about and then it's about 500 lines of code and then you have to find out where the error is and it's yeah it's really tough i know people who do coding when they're working on something right and there's an error they don't sleep they're like you know what i need to find what this error is because you know what the moment you try to put your head down mm -hmm. and then you start thinking and then like um, the moment I'm sleeping, right, I could have been actually, like, figuring out that type of code that I was trying to write. So then you can't sleep. And then you're just there. As the moment you try to close your eyes, mm -hmm. and then there's that one suspension, suspension in you. And then it's like, Kayla, go find out the error. Wake up. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and you guys have something in common. Because, you know, if you see them on their computers, they're like... I need to find this error. I need to find this error. And and once you correct that error, everything is sorted. Yeah, everything is sorted. Now you can sleep and enjoy your life and actually dream. Yeah. So you participated at the Africa Science Buskers, is it? Yeah, I participated there. How did you hear about it? Uh, we were introduced to it by our teachers at Robotics because mm -hmm. I actually, my, I myself didn't know about it, but our teachers introduced it to us. And you, and you went with the project? Yeah. And competing with high school projects, you know. Yeah. All those older people have their own innovative projects and you're also there with your project. You know what? Mm -hmm. When I actually heard that, because um, we had a team, our first time when we went to the Africa Science Buskers, right? Mm -hmm. It was me, Darian, and Amy were in a group and it was the three of us. So we're just there. It was our first time. And then we were so nervous because we had to participate with high schoolers. You just know that, wow, this is nice. And then we're just walking around the whole auditorium, looking at other projects. And then we're like, we don't have a chance to win. Because, you know, when that project is really designed and decorated well, and then you look at your thing, it looks like a piece of junk. Mm -hmm. And then we're like there, and then we're like, guys, we don't have a chance of winning. But when they announced the gold medalist, we were so happy to hear that we were the ones who actually won. Even though our thing looked like a piece of junk, though, yeah, it was actually really great. So what skills or um, knowledge did you find useful when you're preparing for the festival? Well... Most of the knowledge we got, we got it from the internet and some of our, um, some of the help we had, mm -hmm. we got it from our teachers and sometimes we actually act like figured out things ourselves. You're just there, you're sitting, you're looking at the thing then like, guys, I actually found out that this, 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 that, and then you actually discuss it together and find a way to make it better. You talked about curiosity. Yeah. I know you're very curious. And you want to discover a lot of things. You want to know about a lot, a lot of things. Yeah. Are there areas of science and technology that you can say, I'm very interested in exploring? Can you please come again? Like, uh, talking about curiosity, isn't it? Yeah. You talked about how, how much you are very curious about a lot of things. And you are mostly into technology. Are there any areas of technology and science that you can say, you know what, I'm very much interested in exploring these areas? 
Well, the most area I'm really, really inspired to like keep on going in mm-hmm. is electronic engineering. Because I want to make the world a better place. I want to change the world. So, yeah, there. And then you're thinking about it. You look at your, like, your community, how it looks. And then, yes, there's some problems that are happening in your community. Mm-hmm. And you know these problems can be solved. In the world of robotics, in the fields of AI, you know that problems can be solved. And every problem has a solution. So, with robotics... I can find solutions and I can actually figure out what's happening here and then how to f- solve that sol- like problem that you have there. So what advice would you give to someone who wants to be in robotics and explore technology as you do? Well, my best advice I can give you is never give up. Because I remember this other time, mm-hmm. I actually wanted to give up. When you know, um, so first project was the obstacle avoidance robot. So it's there. Mine is there. Everyone else is working, and except for mine. And then I'm just looking at it because everyone's enjoying their time. You know when it's just moving there, and then mine is just stiff and it's standing there. Everyone else's project is working well, and then I'm looking at mine. I can't actually figure out what's happening here. And then, um, so at that moment, I actually felt like giving up. And then when I actually found out what the problem was, it was pretty simple. Because I didn't have enough power for the thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I had given up, it would just stay there and collect dust. So, yeah, never give up. My guy, you're in seventh grade. Yeah. You do coding. Yeah. You do robotics. You talked about reading books. You also talked about, what else did you talk about? Swimming. Swimming. How do you balance all these activities with coding? Like, you know, you're, you're into swimming, uh, you're into reading books, then you also have robotics and you want to be doing coding. How do you balance it? Well, I mentioned earlier that, that you yeah, create a schedule. schedule. So, well, practically my schedule is like this. So, Saturday in the morning, I mm-hmm. have lessons like for my schoolwork. And then afternoon, I can do my extracurricular activities. Then evening, it's resting or if I feel like reading a novel or usually reading I do it after all my activities like when I'm just there sitting or in the morning when I wake up so I can actually get to balance those things because you have a schedule yeah so let's talk about the uh, the project that won the prize at the Africa Science Buskers uh what was the project about well it was a firefighting robot Mm -hmm. and well I noticed that like it was a project that actually like put out fire by itself without putting any human life at risk. So like what happened in our mm-hmm. community, um, I think it was a few months ago when our community like those this other like huge fire that burst out. And well, a lot of people lost their lives because mm-hmm. firemen attended late to the event, which is, well, practically the reason most people died. And most people actually got permanent injuries. So when the firemen actually came there to save the people, some of them actually died and got injured. So I noticed that, well, with the advancement of AI in robotics, you can actually solve problems. Then I thought of a firefighting robot, mm-hmm. which could change the world. And actually, without putting any human life at risk, it actually, it's autonomous. So it goes there and then it puts out the fire easily. So autonomous is the one that you command to do something? and what Autonomous, is it just moves by itself. It, it's not, oh. for you to command it, the, actually, the command you could do is right in the code for it to work properly and so when it detects fire Mm -hmm. it's just going to move to the fire by itself without without anyone actually telling it Mm -hmm. so it's going there then it moves towards the fire so as we're creating the robot the firefighter one um what challenges did you face and how did you overcome them well a lot of challenges were faced for example when i was writing in the code Mm -hmm. like um you know when there are a lot of errors and you actually trying to figure out what it is? That was one problem I faced. Mm-hmm. And then um, second of all, power was another problem. Because power, like I was using batteries, right? And then the batteries had limited power. So I had to use like a lot of batteries, 
which would drain a lot of power. And batteries are really expensive. So I actually solved that problem by getting rechargeable ones so mm-hmm. that I would charge them after they're out of power. How, how, time, how, how long did it take to uh, design and create the robot? I think about a month or two. A month or two? Yeah. Just a month or two. I thought you were going to be talking about years here. To say, oh, it took us two years to work on the robot. So it's just like one robot. That yeah, does it's the just one. Yeah, it's just one thing. Oh. It does. Hey, okay. Okay, okay. Let's not get deep into that. <laughs> I'm not into science. <laughs> so what skills or knowledge did you learn in order to complete this project? In order to complete this mm-hmm. project, well, skills I learned. Mm-hmm. Um, most of the skills, it's either I got them from from the internet or my teachers in robotics. And so your teachers supported you? Yes, our teachers were there to support us. And to guide and you also, throughout the project. Okay. I have my cousin. He's also an engineer. Mm-hmm. So he actually helped me when we were like fixing the thing. And he helped me like... For example, if you want your projects to win and attract people, you have to make it beautiful and look at, make it look designful. So my cousin actually helped me with that. Make it look, wow, amazing people. How old is your cousin? My cousin. 27, I guess. Yeah, he's that old. Oh my goodness, so 27 year old was helping you to come up. Yeah, you know, you guys, do, do you guys learn this in school? Like in your curriculum? Do you have to study robots in your cur- curriculum? Actually, just a club? it's just a club. It's a choice. Because you decide what you want to do, mm-hmm. what you think is more um, comfortable for you. Like I said, it was a real struggle to actually find out about robotics. Mm-hmm. We actually had to move from club to club. For example, I actually went to cookery, music, debate, and a lot more clubs like that. So it was a bit hard. Okay, what's, what was the most exciting part in coming up with this project? Well, the most exciting part mm-hmm. is um, I'm changing the world. I like, know, I, I know, that feeling. Yeah, that feeling like, it's me, I made this, I did this. And you know when you're changing the world, you just have that feeling hyped you up. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, um, I'm going to be news about Kayla Rachel and her project the firefighting robot so it's just the hype up feeling that keeps you're part of yourself right yeah i'm really proud (laughs) like you can feel that this is me who did this yeah i'm really proud people people your age don't even think of that but you are doing something out there you're solving the real life problems that you're facing because um from what you said you're talking about how people died and lost people lost their lives because the firefighters arrived late yeah Okay, I understand. So how do you think we can actually get to use your robot in real life situations? Um, well, practically, if every community mm-hmm. gets to have about maybe three or five of them, then it will be okay. Because when a fire occurs, you're mm-hmm. just going to send a message. Well, the message is going to reach to the robots and then the robots are going to locate your place and then they're going to come there and actually put out the fire. So, so the robots go there alone. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna go there alone. Really? Yeah. They just go like where there's a fire. They detect that there's fire. Then, yeah, they go there alone. Hi, hey, hey, my guy. This is technology. I really wanna see that robot because I'm visualizing a robot in my mind. I'm like, ah, how does it even work? Like, how does it even go to the place? Like, you know, where there's fire. I'm, I'm thinking, I just have a lot of questions. And I understand as well that people have questions, especially the people who are watching live, because we're recording live, right? So um, somebody's asking, what are your future plans or goals for robotics or other projects? Well, my future plans and goals, I really want to get in this other big event. It's mm-hmm. called ISEF. One of the most... Um, and it's, really, it's a really big event where most of the engineers and scientists from all over the world got to go there. And I just want to go there. I want to be a part of ISEF. And I really want to go to ISEF. It's a really big, prestigious competition. Mm-hmm. It's about science and robotics. And I want to go there and get to present my project there. That's like really one thing I'm really excited about. So like, the, you said the ISEF? Yeah. So it's like the, the Olympics when it comes to sports. You know how everybody is looking forward to go to the Olympics. They're like, you know what? 
my one of my goals and my aspirations is to go for the Olympics. So for you is to go for the ISAF. Yeah, well ISAF is like for Olympics but mm-hmm. for robotics and oh. scientists. So that's how different they are. Okay, I understand. So in 2023 you won gold medal at the other um, Africa Science Basket, right? Yes. Festival which happened. Uh you which project did you present there? Um our project was the fingerprint based attendance mm-hmm. system where I was working with Amy and Darian. So um like it's a project whereby like you know how some students actually bank school to go to for other activities <laughs> right? yes. like your parents actually drop you off at mm-hmm. school and then like oh my my child is going to learn and then actually the child is the one who's actually like running away from school and then they come back to school like when it's home time and their parents actually come to pick them up and then they lie about school so um and we actually figured out that our teachers actually take more time to take like attendance for people and students mm-hmm. whilst we could actually be doing other lessons and stuff like that so um like instead of taking attendance mm-hmm. as soon as a person wants to enter class you put in your fingerprint and then it's actually going to mark attendance that's um Kayla's already year in school and then um probably Darian Amy and then Zurasha have not reached school So the ch- teacher is going to check on their iPad or phone how like how many students have actually attended class and they can actually notice which students aren't in class. You're going to get students into trouble. <laughs> you see now some students can be very naughty. Yeah. And not even attend classes, which is the problem that you guys are also trying to solve as well. Because imagine your parents drop you off at school and you don't want to attend classes and they're like, "Ah, let me go for my own deals and my own errands." Then the teacher calls at home is like, Where is Kayla? Did she arrive? Then wh- wh- did you drop her off today? Then they're like, "Yes, I dropped her off." Then she's like, "No, but she didn't come to school." Hey. And then, then you be in trouble. <laughs> and then you learn your lesson <laughs> and then you never bank school again. <laughs> I understand that, but yo, guys, for people who bank school, I never bank school though. So, yeah. If you guys had introduced that robot during my time, I'm sure I would be very very safe because yeah. I loved going to school like especially when I was in primary school and high school. I loved school. I'd always be early for classes. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so in terms of your career, uh what would you want to be? When I grow up, mm-hmm. I want to be an electronic engineer. And cause Madam engineer. Yes. <laughs> engineer. <laughs> the best engineers in the world. Yes. Mm, top one. Hey, 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 hey. Mm-hmm. Who's the role model like who's an engineer? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Guys, Actually, what's with Elon Musk? Emma was like, I want to be the next Elon Musk. Then there you are. You're talking about Elon Musk. Well, Elon Musk is really um into engineering because mm-hmm. he made X, well, you know, as Twitter, well, they changed the name X mm-hmm. and he owns Meta. He also owns this other like aircraft thing. I don't know what it's actually about. He actually made Tesla and all those things. And I'm just there and I'm like, wow. This could be me someday or actually even better cuz you could you, you can be better actually. Yeah. Cuz I want to be up there. Yes, because we don't want Elon Musk again. We want Kayla. Yeah, we want Kayla. Like you know Kayla everyone is like exactly okay. everyone will be like Kayla, Kayla. Yeah. Hey, exactly. Understand and the sky is not the limit. Yeah. You can always do. Hey, Madam Engineer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we can't wait for you. Yeah, you. <laughs> like we are really ready for you to come as an engineer, you know. Well, oh, well done. So do you have any advice for young people who are interested in robotics or coding? Well, my advice is um you should really like you have to keep on you have to keep on going. You have to mm-hmm. be motivated to do something. And never let someone pitch you down um because of something you want to do. For example, your friends they can be like, "Oh, this is lame" and stuff like that. Cuz I remember my first years of robotics everyone else is there and then they go to different clubs and then they actually dragging you to come with them to other clubs exactly. that you're not interested in so i'm just there and i'm like okay but i have to do what makes me happy and then you go to robotics and you have to keep on your, yourself motivated and never give up in robotics mm-hmm. cuz you can't put robotics down cuz i remember this other time i actually gave up I almost gave up on robotics. And then I I come here today and then I'm actually thinking about it. I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for robotics. Mm-hmm. Cuz 
I come, there's this other moment I just come to sit and I, I think to myself, what if I had left robotics? What would I have been doing by now? Because there's this, at this point when you feel like giving up and then you're like, no, I can't do robotics anymore. That's the mo- that's the point I was. I actually like or oh, lied to my dad that actually this 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 that about robotics just because I wanted to bank robotics and I never <laughs> wanted to do it. Again. But you joined robotics on your own. Now you have to lie to your parents. <laughs> yeah, because like um, you know when your parents are actually there, they're supporting you, and then you actually decide to give up on something, and then you're like, oh, so it's not easy to give up on something. Exactly. Your parents actually mm-hmm. like get you there. And then I actually like lied to them and stuff like that. But I'm actually thinking to myself, and I'm like, what if I had re- left robotics? And I'm actually glad that I didn't leave robotics. So my advice to other kids is never give up. Exactly. If you want to do something, go for it. Yeah. Never give up. Thank you very much. You know, with, in the interest of time, time is always jealous. Wish you could have this conversation because I, I want to know more about robotics. I told you about the robots because I really want to know what's gonna happen with those robots, like when there's fire. I I wish I wish to 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 visit you guys and get to see the robots. You like is, actually, is it big though? Is it big? No. Oh, it's, it's just something, it's, just a prototype or something. It's a prototype. So mm-hmm. it's I'd say okay. The size. It's really small. Because it's just a prototype and mm-hmm. you just want it to look real. And, well, I think, like, the actual model would be maybe as big as the studio, probably. Or even actually bigger. But the thing is actually a prototype and it's actually smaller for just presentation. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Kayla. Uh, thank you for tuning in to Genius Kids today with your host, Ben Yoda, well known as Benny. Today we have the pleasure of meeting a truly exceptional 12-year-old Kayla, who is into robotics and she's somebody who is very curious. She's into everything technology, be it AI, anything that is something to do with innovation, you know. She's very curious and she has a passion for reading as well as swimming. Her dedication and enthusiasm are truly inspiring. Stay with us for more amazing stories and extraordinary young talents. Until next time, keep dreaming and keep reaching for the stars with your host, Ben Yoda. Bye. as giants in our industry. We put in that extra mile of service so your car can go that extra mile of performance. Our aim is to make our stopovers feel like home. Giant Petroleum. Limitless Energy.